morning, we tell you thanks as we are operating under the team of Move of Excellence. And our sub theme is God's timing, His plans, and our destiny. This morning, shout hallelujah. If you know that God's timing is perfect, I said shout hallelujah. If you know that God has an excellent plan for your life, I said shout hallelujah. If you know that your destiny has already planned by the most high God, I said shout hallelujah this morning. If you know that your redeemer is alive and well, hallelujah Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much Sister Kerry and Watson Johnson for the prayer and we now invite Sister Latoya Scottbert with the welcome for this morning. Well, I'm here to do the welcome this morning. Let us all stand and welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah! Jesus, you're awesome. Hallelujah! Welcome, Daddy, welcome. Hallelujah! Welcome, welcome, welcome all the members of Franklin Town New Testament Church of God. Welcome any visitors for the first or second time. We welcome you, no visitors here among us. Welcome and have a blessed day. And I pray that the Lord will take his hands. He won't take his hands off of us. Bless you. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Stella Taya, for that. We now invite our praise team with praise break. Praise the Lord. Can we stand together? Hallelujah. It's been participatory all morning. So just right where you are, say the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Come on, say it like you believe that he reigns. The Lord reigns. Oh, getting closer. One more time. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Hallelujah. 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 A fire goes before him. And burns out all his enemies. The hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord, we say, the Lord.
Somebody say word. word. Somebody say word. word. If you want to hear the word, say word. word. This morning we invite a mighty woman of God to share the word of God with us this morning. She is no other than Sister Shauna Moore Kutzmore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's excellent. Oh, Lord, you're excellent. You're excellent in all the word, all the world. 
in each and every one of us. If we serve the living God this morning, just stand with me as I bring this morning's word. Just stand and give God a clap offering, a wave offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Mighty God. Mighty God. No matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. And though my ship may be rocky, and my sails may be torn. I shall rest, I shall rest, I shall find sweet rest in the eye of the storm. Mighty God, hallelujah, this morning has just been amazing the praise and worship team the musicians has they brought the presence of the almighty god in this sanctuary and those of us who are watching online i know you feel you also feel the presence of god and it is beautiful because in the presence of god there is freedom and there is hope even when we feel hopeless I want to greet the brethren in the sanctuary this morning and those who are online. And I have some special greetings as well. In his absence, I greet the Bishop, Dr. Bishop Reverend Ernie Nelson and his beautiful wife, Dr. Kerry Ann Nelson, as well as their children. I, I, it was so funny that at a recent women's convention, Dr. Nelson said, oh, Shauna was Rev friend first. And yet today, both of them are my spiritual leaders. I bless God for them. I bless God for their ministry. I pray that as they celebrate anniversary style today, happy anniversary, Rev, if you're watching online, if you're watching later, we salute you, sir. Enjoy the day, Auntie and Rev. And we know that God will continue to use you. 18 years. Cheers to 18. Secondly, I, I must greet some persons who journeyed here with me this morning. Um, there are some mores and a more to be <clears throat> in our midst. You can just wave from where you are. Um, there's also the mother of my godson here with us with a few of her children and adopted children. You can just wave where you are. Yes. <laughs> God bless you. If, you. if you are here this morning. Seeking God, I trust that he will meet you if you get up and meet him. They are not saved, so I pray for them. I continue to cover them under God's blood. And most importantly, and certainly I save the best for last, I want to greet you, Marcus Gutsmore. I know you're online. I pray that you, you continue to be my best friend, my prayer warrior, my intercessor. I pray for your strength even now as you're not physically present here. Yes, as we get into today's word, I ask God to just enable me to effectively communicate what he has laid on my heart. God's timing, his plan, our destiny. What could Sh Sister Shauna really say to us this morning about God's plan and his timing and everything? We, we know everything already. We, we hear other pastors mention it and it's all preached out. But what the Holy Spirit has rest on my heart is that we are doubting God. Franklin told New Testament, God is saying, you have forgotten how powerful I am. You have forgotten how excellent I am. You have forgotten that I am bigger 
than your biggest problem. Stop equating me to your problems. I can give you that solution. So as we move right along in the word, we read from Daniel chapter 2 this morning. And a summary for those who perhaps didn't read Daniel and don't know of him and his friends. They're the Hebrew boys who were taken captive by the Babylonians. And, and specifically, his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they, they went by the, he, the Babylonian name, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three boys, as well as Daniel, decided not to bow. They were not going to serve any other god than the true and living God. And as a result, they met upon a lot of challenges. Um, the three Hebrew boys were thrown in a fiery furnace, and Daniel himself was thrown into a lion of dens. And we know that the Lord sent an angel to close the lion's mouth. But when his detractors went in, they were broken and eaten, and pretty much that was the end of them. So we know that Daniel's God is definitely a deliverer. Do you have a situation this morning that you're saying is bigger than God? Do you have a challenge this morning that you have placed above the power of God? I pray, brethren, that you don't equate or never limit Almighty God because we know that he can come through for us. We know who he is for us. Today, I don't want to focus on Daniel in the den or Daniel's friends in the fiery furnace because there was an earlier move of God and this move was to position Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah in a place of prominence in the enemy's territory. And there are three points that I want to place emphasis on. God's timing is best. Trust him. God's plans are perfect and can be perfected through us. Work with them. Our destiny was preordained. Be obedient. Hallelujah. God's timing is best. Trust him. Without a doubt, a doubt most, most of us know, most of us sitting here today are Christians. Several of those who are online are Christians. So we know that God's timing and his plan is best. So it's not the knowing. It's the waiting is our problem. The waiting and the worrying and the anxiety and the if and God is moving too slow, that is our real problem. And, and if there are some real believers in here this morning who prayed and brought their problems to the altar and took them up back and said, God, you'll take too long. You can say a hallelujah because I've been there. I said, Lord, you're taking too long. My situation need a no result. Resolve. It has to be resolved right, right now. And I don't think your timing, Lord, is, is sufficient. And boy, did we double the timing. Oh, my. Second Peter 3, verses 8 through to 9, reminds us that one day is like a thousand years and vice versa with God. And he's not slack concerning his promises. He is not slack concerning his promises. If God says it so, then I so it go. For those who did not understand, if God says that he will do it, he will do it. So even now, Lord, I pray a special prayer of you know, sanctification and, and, and forgiveness for all the times that we thought you were too slow, that you were slacking off, that you were sleeping on the job. Because, Almighty God, we know if you ever take a wink or doze off, dog, nyam, we supper. Almighty God, we would have drop and, and we wouldn't be alive. We wouldn't be here in your presence today. So God's timing and his plan are connected to a kingdom agenda. It is not for us to be magnified. Oh, my. 
God's plans are connected to a kingdom agenda and is not for Shauna to come up here and be magnified. So let self be slain even now, Almighty God. It is for you to be glorified. And as such, we just have to partner with God and get out of our own way. Yes, let self be slain. Get out of our own way. Move so God can use us. Church, Franklin Town, friends, visitors, family, God wants to use us. And we see this being demonstrated in Daniel chapter 2, whereby the king had a dream and he forgets what he had dreamt, but it troubled him and he also wanted the interpretation of this forgotten dream. Now by this time, King Nebuchadnezzar had found favor with the Hebrew boys and they were serving in his palace. In chapter 1, and I'll read from verses 17 through to 20, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all vision and dreams. Now at the end of the, boy, of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. So we see how these boys, although they were in captivity, they were being favored by God to manifest his plans. Apparently this favor was short-lived because King Nebuchadnezzar had some sort of amnesia and he declared that all the wise men should be destroyed because none of them were able. Those who were in his council at the time, when he asked for interpretation of the dream and what the dream was, they were unable to interpret same. But Daniel had heard the king's decree and he begged for time so that he and the other boys could seek God for divine revelation. Here Daniel portrays wisdom he didn't go to see King Nebuchadnezzar to attempt to interpret the dream or to respond to the king's unreasonable request. All Daniel asked for was time, after which he sought God's assistance first. Although chapter 1 spoke of Daniel having all understanding and can interpret dreams and have visions, he needed God. To, in, to first reveal to him what the dream was and then give him the correct interpretation as this would cost him his life, his friends' lives and all the other wise men that were in Babylon at that time. So just to make a few distinctive facts so far, the four Hebrew boys trusted God. Church, do you trust God this morning for your situation? Do you trust that God can come through for your situation? He em God empowered them with extraordinary gifts. What are your gifts today? What did you think came straight from God? You know, yes, your mother was an intercessor, prayer warrior. But you know that, that don't, that's not transferred through birth. That's through a direct relationship with God. So you're not automatically going to be an a, a evangelist or a prayer warrior or a preacher or a minister. No. But God was able to do it. And two, his kingdom was going to crumble. But Daniel, although a boy, and scholars say he was about 21 or so, so he was a young man. He approached the great King Nebuchadnezzar and didn't water down what God wanted him to say to King Nebuchadnezzar. When I think of that, I just think of 
of bravery. When I think of Daniel going in front of the king, I think that he was very, very brave. I know the Bible said he had a spirit of excellence, but there's no way somebody can come in front of me as king or queen to say, you're going to die and your, your kingdom is going to crumble and another is going to take over. And then I promote that person to prominence. I, it doesn't really add up, but God. It doesn't really add up, but God. So in Proverbs 3 verses 5 through to 6, you are reminded of this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He shall direct your path. Just as how he directed Daniel's path. So wherever you are right now, it's not too late for you to align your dreams, your goals, your ambitions with the word of God and the will of God. Wherever you are right now, it is not too late. When God gave King Nebuchadnezzar that specific dream, it was a part of fulfilling kingdom agenda. And going back to the scriptures, Daniel 2, verses 27 through to 29. And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed what should come to pass thereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. And in summary, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream was that of an image made of gold. The head was of gold, the breast and arms of silver, belly and thighs were made of brass, legs of iron and feet were part iron and part clay. And this image represented earthly kingdoms, current and those to come. However, they were all destroyed by a stone. And this stone became a great mountain. Big, big mountain. When we think about mountains, we think about the blue mountains? No, that can't fill the earth. What we think about when we think about mountains? Children, Mount Everest, highest mountain, that still can't fill the earth. God's kingdom. His presence, his glory is what will fill the earth. I will speak specifically of the head because the head that was made of fine gold represented Babylon. After which the Medes and the Persians represented as the silver overthrew them and it continues down to iron and clay represented by a mixture of ten strong and weak kings under the Roman Empire. However, it's the mountain, it's God's kingdom that will be the only eternal, indestructible, forever standing kingdom here on earth. His kingdom will be the kingdom that reigns supreme and is subjected to no man, no thing, no nothing that he created. Now obviously, because he created all things so if you are here this morning and you know that you're serving a God who is all powerful you know that you are a kingdom citizen you know that you are heaven bound I just want you to take a second and just feel free to just worship because you are already serving on a kingdom mission you know that you're a part of this process 
You know that you are serving God and you are doing his will. Just glorify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Now, Daniel, although he was probably fearful when he heard the decree that all wise men should be slain, he was used of God mightily in this first assignment. As such, he was promoted in King Nebuchadnezzar's palace, and literally he was the king's main advisor. And he did not, most importantly, he did not forget those who interceded and sought God with him. So he requested of King Nebuchadnezzar that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be given positions of authority as well. Although, of course, his rank was much higher. I am sure that Daniel did not foresee in his wildest imaginations and you know, he's excellent and he, he foresees things, but he did not see this mighty move of God. The great King Nebuchadnezzar was here taking advice from a captive, from a little Hebrew boy. Is Church, those of us who are here this morning, we're children, yes, teens, our children here worshiping with us. The Lord can use you mightily. Just position yourself where the Lord can use you. Shemarian friends, the Lord can use you. Ramel and company, the Lord can use you. Young Azania and Ajani, the Lord can use you. Just look at our young people at the front, serving God in a major capacity. Tyreek and Jessica, the Lord will continue to use you. Just as how he used Daniel and his three friends. But guess what? What if Daniel had not separated himself from the others along with his three Hebrew friends? What if they weren't willing to be used of God? Do you think that God's plan would have failed? Do you think that God's plans would have fell through? No. Probably today we'd be reading of Hananiah and the three Hebrew boys, or Mishael and the three Hebrew boys, or Azariah and the three Hebrew boys, because God's plans must succeed, even if he has to use another vessel. So, if we think that Oh, I can do my own thing, you know. I me run things. Even though God has placed on your heart what you should be doing, don't be surprised. You wake up two, three days after and see a neighbor or your friend or even your enemy who wasn't a Christian doing exactly what God placed on your heart in your life to accomplish. Don't be surprised. So anyone who God has spoken to, he came to you in a vision, a song, a word. In the scripture, the scripture spoke directly to your heart. And you know that you should be doing ministry or you should be running or you should be cooking or whatever it is and you fail to do it, don't be surprised to see God using someone else because his mission here on earth must be accomplished either or either way. When we reflect on Daniel, we realize how many persons were dependent on him. Now, we don't have a figure, but just to think of himself, his three Hebrew friends, all the other wise men who, if there was no interpretation or revelation of the vision, they would have been slain. How many persons are dependent on you today? Have you ever sat and thought, just add up, how many people are waiting on you 
to get that degree or start that business or start that charity foundation? How many persons do God want you to impact, to bring them closer to him, to be drawn a little closer so they can, they too can encounter the presence of the Almighty? When, when, when I think of how many persons are dependent on me, I, I did a rough check. Um, there are 20 plus under the age of 18, and, and my parents are, are at a, a place of retirement, a stage of retirement. So, so when I add up how many nieces, nephew, I have one grandniece, how many nieces and nephews I have adopted be, being married now to the Gutsmore family, I got at least 21 persons. And I said, Lord, that is heavy. Imagine if it was me alone in a sense, but I know that you are with me, almighty God. I know that if I fall short, I will directly impact negatively 20 plus lives. My godson is here this morning. He's one of four. I will negatively impact four godsons. Church, the Lord is waiting on us to take up our purpose and run with it. That's what God is waiting on. He doesn't want another. He wants to use me and you, you and I. What are we waiting on? Don't you want to be a Daniel? Don't you want to be a Shadrach, a Meshach, and a Bendigo? To be used of God mightily? Of course, it might not be recorded. But the Lord would have seen your work and reward you accordingly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we look at our destiny being preordained, be obedient. Honestly, I wanted to look at Esther's appointment and, and her actions because it's, it's Young Lady Sunday. And I wanted a female to, to, to really expound on, on what she went through. I even thought about David because David was anointed king three times. And it, I didn't know that he was anointed three times. It's when I was really looking into the word, I got that revelation. And I was like, David, King David had to wait so long anointed by Samuel, anointed by, by his people from the line of Judah, and then to be accepted and anointed by the Israelites. And I was like, Lord, David was a patient man. I need some of that patience. Because if I knew from a child, a younger age, that I was going to be this great person, and it took long, surely along the way, I would have doubted. Surely along the way I would have probably slipped, but not David. And, and when I thought of it, I said, and the, and the Holy Spirit also led me to say, no, look at Daniel and the three Hebrew boys as they face oppression. Although they face the oppression, they were favored of God and favored of kings. <laughs> that alone kind of led me to just stick with Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. They were in a place of discomfort. All the odds. Now, now think of captivity. They were pretty much slaves. And they were plucked out of the batch because they were good looking. They appeared intelligent enough to understand the Babylonian ways. So they were taught for three years Babylonian customs. And then when the king, after three years, saw them, they were able to be considered ten times smarter, more intelligent, excellent 
than all wise men, astrologers, magicians who have been doing that for so many years. Yet the king saw greatness in them. Do you want others? Do you want to see greatness in yourself this morning? Trust in God. He will get it done. Just be available. Trust in him. Now Daniel was used by God on several other occasions. He got visions and interpreted same. The king and his successors received visions, writings on the wall, required Daniel to interpret, explain to them what those things meant, and he was the only one who was able to do so by the help of God. I believe just as Jeremiah's life was preordained, so was Daniel's. Before his mother and father knew each other, the Lord knew Daniel and placed within him the spirit of excellence. And was, he was ordained a prophet. And I think he was first ordained a prophet for kings, for people in high authority, for persons in the highest authority. And then secondly, of course, to the nations. Scholars say that he lived up to about age 80. So Daniel advised various kings for the 60 or so years that he was in captivity in Babylon. He was also an intercessor for his Jewish captives and he fasted and prayed for their sins, their shortcomings, and their overall disobedience. Because we know it's by disobedience that they were taken captive. The Israelites were always chosen of God, always set apart, but somehow, somehow, just as you and I are today, somehow they always seemed to disappoint God and moved away from him. They worship other gods. Car more important, house more, than, more important, son and daughter became more important and those things were placed high in their sight. Can we relate this morning? Instead of putting God and allowing him to remain at the center, the Israelites worship gods that they never even know nothing about. They did not even know about gold image and for create this and worship man-made. They, the Israelites, who see the move of God like no other nation. Mighty God. But the Lord still loved them. That's, that's, just, that's just the amazing part of this story. That the Lord still loved them and favored them and blessed them. Mighty God. Just like how you still love us today, Lord. You still bless us today, Lord. You still lift us up to prominent positions, not for our glory, but for your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel answered the call of God and was favored. Will you answer the call of God today? Do you want to be favored of God and by extension be favored of men? Are we willing to say, Lord, here I am, you can use me. And the whole genesis of me getting this word was that I was in a, I am in a place of prominence. And the Lord had positioned me there for his purpose and for his glory. And I began to doubt what he could do and what I know he's able to do. And I started piling up my problems. And, and they, they, they seemed as big as the Blue Mountain Peak and the range. And, and then I put some more things on top of it. And, and they look like Mount Kilimanjaro, but, but really and truly, what I was doing 
was I was making my problem seem bigger than something God could, could fix and, and remove. And sometimes I just thought that I was in Daniel's position, favored of God, favored of those who are above me, my, my manager, the chairman of the board who, who oversees the operations of the authority in which I work. But of course, there was opposition coming from within me and from without. And I was like, Lord, why am I here? Even though Marcus and I prayed and I applied for the job and the Lord favored me. And our moderator, she preceded me in preaching a few weeks ago and she spoke of double and triple. And that word blessed me, Minister Trishana, in the name of Jesus, blessings. And her, her, her preaching blessed me and it kind of started that shift. Hallelujah. That shift that brought me back in alignment with God. It was a realigning word to just trust him. Wednesday night, Bible study was testimony night. And all I could think of is some trust in horses. Some in chariots. But I will. I will continue trusting in almighty God. And I was at. Hallelujah. I was at a place of depression in that job. July 4th was that little baby's birthday. And I planned the first family fun day, July 3rd, to celebrate that baby over there. Ajani. He who wins the struggle. And my best friend was transitioning. But she didn't pick up. Dr. Nelson said to me, something is wrong. And I didn't disclose at that time. It's the first it's being said publicly. Um, Mr. Gottsmore, we'll speak afterwards. You too did not know of this. Probably you felt it in your spirit. But the enemy came in and planted a seed of doubt. And that job that, that the Holy Spirit said to me was to bring financial freedom was becoming a burden. And I was ready to give up. The minister preached. A word was placed on my desk. God is in control. And I'm telling you, I received a breakthrough in the Lord's presence in that same office that was supposed to tear me down spiritually. I received a breakthrough from God. And he strengthened me. There's just, just something about deliberately going into the presence of God. There is something special when you purposely set aside time. And, and since I was in church every week, around the back, <laughs> I was in church every single week. And the enemy had already planted that, that seed of doubt. And I listened to Rev's word, his preaching. I listened to it the Sunday because I was in church and I replayed the Monday to let it soak throughout the week. But somehow, somehow, so even though we are Christians, some of us here today, and we know God, we trust him. So we say, we trust him. And we can be in church and in a dark place. 
But this morning I bind up that dark place. Whoever else is in that dark place even know what we bound on earth is bound in heaven right now. Whoever might fall into that situation, whichever young lady in this, in this service online today, that might fall into that trap. The devil is a liar. And every time he comes with that seed of deception, run him and run to God. Because our God, Daniel's God, Daniel's God, Daniel's God is still deliverer and he is still all powerful. He is still Jehovah Jireh. He is still Jehovah Nisi. He is still immutable. He is unchangeable church. And all we have to do is stick with him because I never stayed home. I came, I heard the word. The Lord knew what was happening and he cut out a, a little section and stick the word in there. Thy words have I hid in my heart, O oh Lord. Mighty God Church. So when we talk about our, our destinies being preordained, I know, I personally know what my calling is. Do you know what your calling is today? I know the purpose why I'm here on this earth. As I said to you, it was our first family fun day that I was, I was planning. And, and this is not my first family event. But I know that my purpose is to bring persons together. And to allow them to feel loved, to feel special. It takes resources to do this. And the Lord has blessed me when we when talk about provision for the project. That's me walking, living, fulfilling that word. When I reflect, and I know Rev is on his anniversary, and, and wedding anniversaries are to be celebrated in the biggest, the best ways ever. That's how we should celebrate wedding anniversaries. But when I reflect on my own life, I have a walking faith anniversary. Yeah, me too. I have my wedding anniversary, matrimony, I'm married, everyone. Mrs. Shauna Moore got more. And I will celebrate that in a few months' time. However, I have a walk in faith anniversary. And in 2018, the first of June, very special date already, because my first sibling, that's his birthday. But the Lord had me walk out of a situation and walk into his will, his way. And I tell you saints, monies that I had not used in 2011 and in 2012 because I got a part scholarship at university, all those monies, the Lord allowed me to save those, invest those. And in my couple months, about six months of walking in faith, those monies became helpful. They, they were expended because I did not have an income. I walked out of a lucrative job because I realized that it was not aligned with my purpose. Sundays I was at work. Saturday night I was at work. It's, it's Monday to Friday your work and Saturday and Sunday and it's two shifts. Day shift, night shift, you leave work, you go home, you work. And there was no balance. And the Lord said, Shauna, this cannot continue. And church, he provided within those six months, I tell you, he provided. He provided for my faith walk years before I would take that walk. And every time I think of it, I just glorify God. I know I have other purposes. The Lord allows me to bring people to resources and vice versa. So even though I'm a part of several charities indirectly, 
And I know some aunties are in here today. I have sent them a message. I've reached out to them. I say, auntie, just even a thousand dollars. Sponsor this because it's going to bless a life. When I talk about dependence and partnering with God, just, just partner with me as I partner with God, as I partner with somebody else to bless others. You are here today and you are saying, Lord, what is my purpose? Lord, how can I use what you have blessed me with? How can I access what you have for me? And the Lord is saying, just come to me. I will make a way. I will prepare the destiny helpers. I will prepare those who will assist you to achieve my mission here on earth. And I was like, Lord, I will continue to partner with you. So don't, don't distrust God. Don't disbelieve him. No one understand that he is with you. No one understand that he will use others to bring you, to draw you closer to him. And for his will to be done here on earth. There are other things that the Lord has spoken to me that I should get done. And I don't want to look across the street or look down the road and see someone else fulfilling those same dreams. Yes, of course, if lo the Lord wants 5, 10, 50 of us to do this specific project, let his will be done. But not because of my disobedience, not because I said, Lord, you want me to establish a financial literacy mentorship program. I can't even say that in one breath. Where must I get the first dollar from? But the Lord says it should be done and it must be done through you. So this was dropped in my spirit a few years ago. And as I wrote this word to, to share with you, I was like, Lord, apparently now is the time. Because if I don't get it done, surely you're going to use someone else. Surely my dependents are going to be delayed. But you, in your perfect time, I know that this will be established. So in wrapping up today's word, I, I don't know if any of us still think that we are entitled to advise God when things ought to start or finish in our lives. We might even be proud and, and as I said before, kind of take back some of our prayers, some of our burdens that we went to the Lord with. We take them back and say, let me get this done on my own terms. But obviously, that's not the way to go. Not on this Christian journey. God wants obedient men and women, boys and girls, whatever your case might be, to partner with him to get his work accomplished. As a matter of fact, many are still waiting on a Messiah. When I did a little research, there's a religion of about 14.8 million people who are still doubting God. They, they serve Jehovah, but they don't believe in Jesus. They think that he's yet to come. But we know, all the Christians in here know this morning, that Christ came in the fullness of time. And it is by his great sacrifice that we are here today declaring victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Are there any victory? people in the house this morning are there anyone amongst us who would like to declare victory in franklin town this morning we bless the lord we glorify almighty god we know that he is victorious the, the praise and worship team sang when when i look in my sermon i had way maker miracle worker promise keeper and i kind of left it up left it out but I know God was was just setting up each and every one of us up this morning to be reminded that he is still God there, there's a song about it doesn't matter where we are
pretty much that's what the song is saying. It doesn't matter if we're in a good time or it is a bad time. God is still on his throne. He is still God alone. And we are here in his sanctuary this morning declaring that he's victorious. Declaring that we are victorious. Because as long as we are serving God, we too are victorious. Even in the grave, Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior. I was just fully absorbed and just my mind just went this morning when the praise and worship team was here, both for divine worship and for the praise break. Because it's like, the, it's like Sandrine and her team knew what was in the word today, that we serve a risen king. And as such, our problems are dead because he gave us the solutions. All our problems today, all the isms and the schisms that is happening around us, the mind game to shut us down, they are dead because Christ has risen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the, the King of Kings, the Most High God. Glory to Him. All glory and honor belongs to you, Lord. And we bless your name. If there's anyone in our presence this morning, you do not know the Lord as your Savior. I talk about this victory. I talk about living in power. I talk about the spirit of excellence that was upon Daniel's life. And you do not have that access to power. Even now, I ask you to come to the altar as there is someone here that will pray for you to intercede on your behalf. Children, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. If you're not, if you do not know the Lord as your Savior, come. And he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been hasn't he always come through for you he's the same now as then you may not know how you may not know when but he'll do it again. Romel, I know that you're not saved. You can come. Alexia, I know that you are not saved. You can come. Bring your cousin with you. Azania, you're pretty young, but you can still come and serve the Lord. We have many examples of children serving God in a child capacity. Not as an adult, but as a child. And the Lord used them. Children, come for prayer. You are in the sanctuary. The presence of the Lord is here. And for those among us, you don't even have to move. But you know that the Lord has placed on your heart a burden that he needs you to accomplish. And you have been shying away. But don't you shy away any longer. Get up and get what the Lord has placed in your spirit done. And he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. Just take a look. At where you are now and where you have been, hasn't the Lord always come through for you? He's the same now as then. 
You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he will do it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jehovah. And Lord, you have placed your young people before us this morning, as young as Ramish, to as old as Shemaria. And you have sent young Ramish, mom, here this morning. And I know, Almighty God, it's not by accident. It is your divine will. So even now, Almighty God, we ask the congregation just to stretch their hands towards those who are at this altar. And they don't know the Lord as Savior. They don't have the, 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 the promise. They haven't accessed that promise that we have accessed, church. And so it's our duty just to say, Lord, Bring them a little closer. Lord, cover them under your blood. Lord, use them as you see fit. So even now, Almighty God, we come in your presence and we place the children and their, their respective mom or mothers who, who came with them. And we ask you even now, Almighty God, that you take full control you know each and every situation, Almighty God. There is nothing that you do not know. So even know, Almighty God, search their hearts, King Jesus. They have fallen short of your glory. But we know that you are so loving, so merciful, so full of compassion. Just as over and over the Israelites failed you. And they had to be taken in captivity as punishment. You, almighty God, you still favored them. You still loved them. Even in bondage, you were still their God. So even now, Lord, touch the little hearts that are in front of you. I don't know if anyone will say yes to you today, Lord, but let each and every one of them know that they are here for a purpose. The mother and father might have been caught in a situation and they did what they did, Almighty God, but the product, the child here, is not an accident. So we erase that from their minds, their thoughts, their beings, even now. Almighty God, because they are here for a purpose. And Lord, when they say yes to you and they start this kingdom citizen journey, the enemy is going to want to come in and attack. Not them, Almighty God, but the purpose that you will place in them for them to fulfill here on earth. So even now, we block out the adversary. We put up a standard even now. We rise it up amongst these, Almighty God. They are covered from the head to the sole of their feet. They are covered under your precious blood even now, God. And even now, as they say yes to you in their heart, you're working on them, Holy Spirit. They don't have to say yes openly. They might be, you know, a little doubtful. But even now, God, we snatch that doubt out of their mind. And we say, Lord, let them yield to you. Let them submit their lives to you, Almighty God. Let them know that there is a victory. And this is not an earth victory, a 10-year victory. This is an eternal victory that they can access even now, Almighty God. We say, we say yes on their behalf. 
because we, we, we are in Christ and we know what Christ can do for us. So we say yes on their behalf. We, we, we our heart cry this morning, Lord, is for them to accept you and to just walk in your light. To just walk in your mission, Almighty God. To walk into their preordained destiny. Almighty God. Ministers are here this morning. Evangelists are right here. Entrepreneurs, Almighty God. Philanthropists are right here this morning to, to give back. In another 10, 15, 5 years, whichever timing that you, Almighty God, will declare a release on your people. So, Almighty God, we pray for their lives. They are going back to school in a few weeks, Almighty God. We pray for excellence. That, that Daniel spirit of excellence must be upon their lives even now, Almighty God. Even know King Jesus. So that when they go to school, they can have the favor of God and teachers and principal. So even when mommy and daddy don't have it, a teacher will say, come son, come daughter. Here is a lunch money. Here is lunch. This is my lunch, but the Lord said I should give it to you. Lord, we declare miracles in these lives. These young lives that are here before you. And we thank you, Father, for loving them and accepting them just as they are. And we know, Almighty God, that you will indeed do it again. Do it again in their parents' lives. Do it again for the daddies that are not here. Some are working. Some have to go back to work later. Do it again, Almighty God, for the mothers that are not here to cry out for the children, the daughter, the son. We are here to cry out for them, Lord. And we will always be crying and praying and fasting because none of these lives here on this altar today should go to the adversary, should fail. These are all victory babies, victory young people. They are walking in victory, talking in victory, learning in victory, going out to get jobs in victory, going out to be the employer in victory. And we bless you for them, almighty God. And we know that you will continue this work that you have started in their lives. And we know, almighty God, that they will be yours and they will be champions. We bless and we honor you, Lord, for them, their parents, their guardians, everyone, Almighty God, who prayed for them. We ask you to multiply that prayer, that blessing that they asked for in their own lives and their children's lives. In your name we pray and we tell you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And he'll do it again for you he'll do it again just take a look at where you are now and where you have been hasn't the lord always come through for you He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he will do it again. I invite the moderator to come. Sister Shauna, stand with me. Church, stretch your hands towards the woman of God and help me pray father this morning we tell you thanks oh god for your servant that has been so faithful in delivering the word of god the undiluted word this morning oh god we ask that you'll cover under your precious blood uh, from all arm from all danger lord even though we ask that you'll hide her in the secret places of your pavilion father i pray that you'll cover our family oh god i pray even now that you cover our home i pray that you cover our job i pray that you cover our mind in the name of jesus christ of nazareth 
Father God, I pray even our according to your word, oh God, that when the enemy is coming in like a flood, your spirit will lift up a standard against them, even now in Jesus' name. I will lift up a standard against every plot and every plans that fell concerning your daughter. And Father, everything, oh God, that she have taught, that she have given up to your people this morning, may be multiplied and be returned and restored unto her. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, for every trouble we claim in double for her this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll experience it this week uh, like never before. Show up on her, Lord, behalf in miraculous way, in unexpected, unexpected ways. Uh, this morning, oh God, we declare, oh God, uh, a victory in and over the life of your daughter, over the family of your daughter, in the home of your daughter, in Jesus' mighty to name and we declare it all done in Jesus name ah uh, father God this morning I tell you thanks oh God for your daughter as uh, she came with the word that God's mission must be accomplished church I sat there this morning and I was battling with the Holy Spirit I was saying God should I give you this testimony give the church this testimony because when I had asked the Lord for it I said God this is between me and you, you and I. And I heard Sister Shana said that if you turn down the calling of God, God will let somebody else do it. So even if I should turn down the calling to testify in the house of the Lord this morning of his goodness, Sister Terry, I don't want you to get my blessing. I want it. So I'm going to testify, Church of God. You know I've been asking the Lord for a particular thing. As I said, it's between me and God, right? And I said, God, it's time now. I've sowed. It's time for me to receive my harvest. And I've been battling with the Lord for that particular thing. And church, on Wednesday of this week, I had a supernatural encounter where I had this vision. The angel of the Lord appeared to me in the vision and said, the grant has been released. I woke up out of my sleep and I was like God said the grant has been released so me now being the me that I am I started to check all of my bank accounts church of God and church of God I check I check I check I check I don't see anything unusual then when I got to the last one church in the name of Jesus I'm here to report that God has been faithful God is good to me I said two million dollar has been re released to me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I said there's provision for the project God said tell my people so that somebody in the house can be encouraged today that I am still working miracle. I said God is going to show up in your life this week in unexpected ways. I said believe with your whole heart. What is it that is burdening you this morning? Is it the children back to school school fear? I said God has already solved that problem. I said the Lord has already fixed that for you in the name of Jesus. Look out for God. Be on the alert. God is still working miracle. He did it for me as recent as Wednesday of this week. The Lord came through for me. And Shana, I thank you so much. Because if it was not for that word, I would be going on with this testimony. Be encouraged, church. Uh, this morning, uh, we now invite Sister Terian and Sister Joan, followed by Sister Joan with the announcements. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. We continue to bless the Lord. Wow, it was a powerful day today, isn't it? And it was so good to be in the church, in the house of God this morning, to receive the blessings from him. So we continue to give God praise, honor, and glory. All right, as you know, I'm here to announce VBS. Uh, it's vocational Bible school time, and we will be doing it this coming week uh, from Wednesday to Friday. That's the 17th to the 19th. So please, parents, ensure that you send out your children. You know, we take them from age three up to teenagers, so send them out. We know that they'll be at home watching TV and just wasting time. So send them out, man, and let them learn some more about God. 
our theme this year is making wave. What you do today will impact your tomorrow. And I heard that the minister, um, the preacher said it earlier, you know, that we must make good decisions, right? So we want to ensure that we teach our children how to make impactful decisions. No, because they're making waves and everything that you do today, it will impact your tomorrow. So when you make positive decisions today, then of course you're going to reap positive things later on. But and, and then you get the reverse in that. Negative, bring negative, right? So bring them out. The theme is making waves. What you do today will impact your tomorrow. It's from Wednesday to Friday. And also, as I said last week, um, the pre-registration is already online. So please ensure that you do that, parents who are on the the church platform and also the children's ministry and the um, ladies ministry all the other platforms the other groups it's a send out so please pre-register your child or children because on friday we also want to give textbooks so we have to know the textbooks before so that we can buy it in advance and remember as i said last week please to ensure that you put the author's name put the, the name of the book the author's name and the edition um, of that book also as as well on the Friday we will be having combination with the children's ministry and the youth fellow the youth department sorry and we'll be giving out the books the textbooks and also back to school supplies so please ensure that your kids are out because it's going to be a good time thank you very much Uh, sorry, the time is from 9 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Thank you. I just want to run and applause me here for VBS. Come on. Because I could remember back when I was a teenager, I'm usually come and get them trouble. I'm not going to lie. Yes, Sandy, I get... Oh, Auntie Susan, you laugh after me. I'm getting old. I remember back in the days, eh? So I'm here to announce Youth Week. Youth Week starts on Sunday. Can I get a hallelujah? All right, so that was warm up. I understand. So I have a warm up sometime. You understand? So Youth Week starts on Sunday. Can I get a hallelujah? All right, that sound better. That sound better. So we launch Youth Week on Sunday coming. That is August the 21st, and we continue straight to August 27th. On the 21st, that's Sunday coming, we would be having our normal launch. You know, but you know it have a twist because we're going to be whining and dining, or both our members and the community. So dinner basically is on us. How that sound? That sound good, don't it? sound well good and then as we progress through the week on tuesday we'll be having a very good panel discussion on zoom on wednesday we'll be on on monday sorry on tuesday we'll be having our movie day on wednesday we have bible studies on thursday we have a back to school medicals normally we would have the medical with the, the back to school treat but we will be joining vbs with that back to school treat so on Thursday, we'll be having back to school medical. It's the same link as VBS if you want your child or your children to, to see the doctor for their back to school medicals. You can, you can still sign up that form. If you know anyone in the community who, don't, who doesn't attend this church that needs to get their back to school medical done, you can send it to them. It helps cut costs at the end of the day. So if you can get it free, take the chance and take the opportunity on friday we have ultimate games night i don't know if anybody has ever been to our ultimate games night <laughs> when they hear the noise it means that they have been to our ultimate games night it is on zoom and it is very very much exciting and full of competition in the lord and we have fun and we get prizes as well we get walipa prizes don't it don't it <laughs> it is fun and full of um, excitement and surprises. And then on Saturday, guess what's keeping on Saturday? What, what, what? Ah, we hear beach trip. On Saturday, we are going to the Spanish River. I'm excited because I'm not like salt water too much. Some here river, I'm feel good, don't it? Say you no, know, say refreshing, you don't it? So. On Saturday, we'll be going to Spanish River. The bus leaves at 6 o'clock. The cost is 3-5 um, for adults, 2-5 for children. It is all-inclusive. It includes food, transportation, and entrance. And we're going to have fun in the Lord. Sister Cheryl, I see you. Um, <laughs> under 12. That's what I mean. For, what's your face, no man? Yes. 
No, sis. No, sis. I don't know which child I want there. So, uh, all child or children under the age of 12, that, that is considered what is a children. Um, by the way, you can give your names to anyone on the youth board. Myself, Sister Dana, Rochelle, Sister Nelson, um, Robert Taylor, Alec, Patrina, Brittany, Brittany the overseas. But yes, you can give your name to anyone on the board. One bus almost full already. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, people name on the bus list. So please give your names down so we can plan for you. Because the food is nice, don't it? I don't want to I don't want to stretch nothing. You understand? I don't want to get a quarter chicken. I don't want the leg alone, don't it? Tell the truth. So let us plan for you. So give your name to anyone on the board so that we can plan accordingly. And now I hand over back to the moderator for her to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. I now invite Deacon Leonard Taylor to do the benediction for us. Sister Elliot Barnett, we are um, just going to ask, I know it's impromptu, but in the absence of Deacon Taylor, can you do the benediction first, please? Let us stand in the house of the Lord. As I came up, the Lord just gave me this song to use as a benediction. And so let us just put our hands up and we just sing this song. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be God bless you all. God go with you. May his peace rest with you.